initiating moisture. Welcome to the Moist Meter. Today we're taking a look at Godzilla Cross Kong New Empire. I was a big fan of Godzilla vs. Kong, and as all of you know, 2023's movie of the year for me was Godzilla Minus One, so I've become a huge Godzilla enthusiast recently. There have been bangers in the Godzilla franchise, so I had very high expectations of this film going into it. And I'm gonna be honest, it's a bit of a mixed bag. I had a lot of fun with the movie, but it's undeniably a step down from Godzilla vs. Kong. At least in my opinion, which makes it undeniable. So, I think the action in here is the best Kong action we've seen. King Kong is by far the star of the show. It's mainly a movie about Kong. Godzilla is more of just a cameo that appears every now and then. He's like a raid boss that pops up occasionally. His screen time is reserved to him just basically one-shotting some other titans. So he's on screen, he just bops one titan, kills him and absorbs some radiation. He's literally one punch man as a kaiju. He then bops another titan, Tiamat, absorbs some radiation. Then you don't see him again for like 45 minutes. Then he has a huge role to play at the very end, but it's mainly a movie that focuses on Kong. And I don't mind that at all. They did a really good job with King Kong. There's a super impressive like 20-25 minute scene without any dialogue at all. And it's Kong interacting with others in Hollow Earth. Others of his kind, and without a single word being spoken, it's able to convey the entire story of what's happening, with Kong finally realizing he's not alone. It's actually a really, really great scene, but I also like the scene that precedes it, when Kong first realizes there's other great apes like him. He gets ambushed, like a little tiny great ape, a, a child, a toddler, comes at him, and like bites his finger and he's like, damn, ouch! And then like he gets jumped by three other great apes. So he takes the little toddler and starts using him as like a baseball bat and slapping him around with the little guy. And then he throws the little guy away. It like actually just potato sacks him, throws him away like a trash bag. And then ends up befriending and becoming like a pseudo father figure to that little great ape. And that's when he stumbles upon, upon like the entire society of them. And that's when that scene happens that I'm talking about. That's like 20 minutes of showcasing that their leader is pure evil. There's a lot of bad stuff going on there. And you really get a lot of story just through their expressions and what you're seeing without any dialogue. And I thought they did a great job with that. But I want to change gears real quick here and talk about the humans. Because unfortunately you have to talk about those cringe meat sacks that appear in these movies. Godzilla Minus One is still to date the only kaiju movie I think that does a human storyline super well. This movie has to have the stupidest plot I've seen in quite some time. I don't like to get into spoilers when doing moist meters here, so I'm going to do my best to tiptoe around some of this, because I don't want to ruin it, but I have to give you some examples of the absolute fucking lunacy here from plot points. So there's a scene where King Kong gets frostbite, and the humans see this, and it's very emotional, it's like, oh no, that doesn't look good, he's hurt. And then one of them goes, Eureka! I've got it! Doc, do you remember the powerhouse project that the government cut funding to? And she's like, the powerhouse? You can't mean... Yes. And they're like, what is a powerhouse project? It was a project where we were going to make Titans stronger with augmentations. What do you mean augmentations? I'll show you. And he's like, it's luckily one of the prototypes got shipped out to Hollow Earth before the government pulled the funding. So the prototype is 500 feet away from where King Kong just collapsed. I'll go grab it. And the next scene is he goes to the armory that has the powerhouse prototype. And he literally fucking airdrops a power glove, a Nintendo power glove, onto King Kong's arm, which immediately, like, autopilots onto it. And it also came with an anti-frostbite serum. I shit you not. An anti-frostbite serum, because I guess they knew this day was coming. They knew he'd suffer from frostbite eventually. So they made him the Infinity Gauntlet, and he wears it for the rest of the movie. Don't get me wrong, it's super fucking cool that King Kong starts walking around with a robo-fisto. But also, if you really stop to break it down, that is so nonsensical. <laughs> Why? What are the odds? <laughs> like, that's crazy. I, I, I mean, good, good on them for foreseeing such a crazy sequence of events happening with him getting frostbite on his hand and also collapsing pretty close to the armory so he could go grab it real quick for him. It's very, it, it's dumb things like that. Like, it's fun dumb. And I think it's self-aware in its stupidity, because a scene that comes pretty shortly after that is a whole series of outlandish shit that I probably can't spoil, 
but it revolves around a psychic child who has this mission where they're basically the chosen one out of the Jedi prophecy, but instead of like a high midichlorian count, they're like super psychic and can summon a monster that will help them. And after all of this stuff is happening, also there's a whole society of human beings that communicate with each other telepathically, so most of their scenes just revolve around, that, revolve around them standing still, looking into each other's eyes, and then going away because they beamed, quantumly beamed, all the information they needed to at each other. But any, I'm already getting lost explaining this, this kind of shit. But anyway, after a lot of stuff like that happens, the same guy who brought the power glove is like, you know what, while we're just throwing weird shit at the wall and seeing what sticks, I've got a plan. I'll be right back, I'm gonna go try something. So then he disappears, and he comes back as like a fucking rodeo master with a bunch of birds shooting electricity, lightning bolts from behind him. <laughs> like, and he just goes, yeah, my plan is so much weirder than what you think it's going to be. He disappears, vanishes, and somehow pulls off that maneuver. Again, it's super fun, just really dumb. I wouldn't be surprised to learn the writers were smoking crack, and for the last 30 minutes just told all of the actors to improvise, and they'll just wing it. That, that's what it feels like. It felt like they had no idea where they were writing the humans or what the humans role in here was even supposed to be. So they just did like a ghost stories dub where they just came in there and just got really wacky with it. They're just like, eh, this, I mean, fine, fucking throw it in there, why not? It just doesn't really make any sense <laughs> where the human plot goes. But again, that's not why you're going to see Godzilla Kong New Empire. No one cares about the human side. It's just something that takes up a lot of screen time. It's filler. It's literally the vegetables before you get the dessert, which is the kaiju fighting action. But I just had to mention it because it does take up a large chunk of screen time. They devote a lot of time to it. And it is something special. Hooey! I gotta also mention the dialogue, because the lines here... It's written like a Saturday morning cartoon from the early 90s. Like that powerhouse project scene, that's pretty much exactly how it plays out. The powerhouse project, the one that had the government funding cut to it because it was making Titans too strong and they weren't really on board with that, the one that also happens to be 500 feet away, you can't possibly be referring to that for your plan. Yes, indeed, that is the exact same powerhouse project I am referring to. Like, that, like that's how half of the human conversations go. Like, it's super unrealistic. Honestly, towards the end of the movie, I was half expecting Godzilla to start talking. I thought we'd have ourselves like a Transformers Optimus Prime moment. Sam Witwicky, fetch me a jar of peanut butter and a condom. I'm going to Hollow Earth. But anyway, enough dwelling on that. The important part of the movie is all of the giant monster fighting is superb. Except for the ones where Godzilla just immediately kills them. I would have liked to see that a little bit more. It's just kind of underwhelming to have Godzilla come in here and one-shot some cool titans like Tiamat. I thought would have been a really cool fight to see, but it ends in 30 seconds. But King Kong is the star of the show. He's the one that does the bulk of the fighting, and his fights are exhilarating. There's even a scene where he like throws up a set where he's ready to like actually unleash martial arts or something for a second there. It's just really cool. Like, and it looks great visually, it of course looks great, it's a big budget film. Though as I understand it, this actually has the lowest budget out of the MonsterVerse from what I can tell. It doesn't feel like it though, it still looks great. Except for a couple of the human scenes because they take place in like a crystal domain expansion and you can tell it's the most obvious green screen ever at some points, but aside from those instances, which is again a human problem, a human complaint, everything around the monsters looks great. All the fighting looks good, there's a monster that I'm quite a big fan of that made a surprise appearance in here that I didn't know was going to be here, so that was a lot of fun for me as a fan of that that particular kaiju in the Godzilla franchise. I just had a big old smile on my face. There's a fucking scene where Godzilla suplexes King Kong. Like, how can you not like that? There's also a scene where King Kong and Godzilla are forming like this crazy team up, and they do like some kind of fucking brawlhalla 2v2 combo where they're like literally juggling their enemy together back and forth beating their ass. It's so cool. So yeah, anyway, the thing that actually matters in Godzilla, Kong, New Empire, which is the monster fighting, is amazing. And if you can just go ahead and ignore the outrageous, ridiculous, silly, stupid human storyline and narrative that they build around it, then you're going to have yourself a great time. So, plugging Godzilla Kong, New Empire into the Moist Meter, I'm gonna give it a comfortable 70%. That feels right to me. I would have liked to see more scenes like the one I mentioned where it was no dialogue at all, just Kong interacting with all of the other great apes around him, and it telling a very compelling story. I could immediately tell what Kong was feeling and all of the other characters and immediately getting their motivations and what was going on there. It was super cool. I would like to see more of that. And, of course, more fighting, even though there's a lot of fighting here, but you can never get enough. But, anyway, I thought it was good, I enjoyed it. That's really about it.
See ya.